Alright guys, today I'm going to be doing a how-to video on how to do a disc brake conversion on the front of a 69 Volkswagen Beetle. This is my mom's car she bought not too long ago and it had drum brakes and drum brakes in the front or all the way around, not, not that great. So we're doing the conversion, it should help it stop a lot better. I already got one side done and come around to this side. Here. That's what the drum looks like, pretty small drum. Um, now that I did one side, I kind of know how this side's going to go. First thing you have to do is remove the dust cap. Um, sometimes it can be a pain, as I found out with the other side. It's a, like a press fit on there. So what I did is I put a crowbar up against this lip here, rested it up against the drum, and I whacked on this part of the... Uh, crowbar with a hammer and kind of worked my way around and eventually came off all right once you get the dust cap off you're gonna need a six millimeter allen wrench to take off this uh, kind of set screw clamp thing here and you're gonna want to loosen that up that's loose take your adjustable wrench and spin it off now on the other side it's uh, left hand threads so opposite you gotta spin it uh, clockwise to take it off all right once that's off should be able to pull this right off if it doesn't come off there is a couple holes back here right there where you can stick a screwdriver in and adjust the brakes in if there's a ridge in there it's you know worn down but it should come right off you should buy new wheel bearings I'm gonna reuse these ones since they don't look that old and in good shape repack them put them back in the wheel bearings and the races are the same on these as they are with these uh, this disc brake kit from J bugs so all you gotta do is order that same those same parts and they have them on the, that website as well you can just go to the parts store and get them but you know whatever you want to do and now the next step is to remove these three bolts right here that hold the backing plate on and you can take this all off as one as one piece and you're gonna want to take the brake hose off on this end because oddly I don't know why but uh, this side doesn't spin freely you have to take this side off first and spin the whole brake line and undo it from the wheel cylinder but there's that and I should be able to take the whole thing off so for the brake line it's a 14 17 and 11 that you'll need or should be anyway 17 on the car side 14 on the wheel cylinder side and then 11 for that brake line nut and then these here are just 15s come on get out of there Next thing to do is remove that nut that has a uh, cotter pin in it. And I believe that's a 19. And then these two right here, um, those are also 19, I believe. And then you'll need a uh, one of those forks, ball joint fork to pop these loose and I'll show you how I get this up out of the way. I just kind of put a, a big pipe wrench on there and, and pull it down to get it up out of the way. So basically all you do got to do is put a big pipe wrench right there pull up on this and then that'll drop right out 
then you can just lower it back down and then break that lower ball joint loose off of the uh, uh, spindle there and this kit comes with new spindles so that's why I'm taking this off because the spindles have a mount for the uh, brake caliper on them the new ones all right so now the new one can go on basically just gonna put that on like there start the nut right. and on the bottom the bottom is the side that gets the small washer and the lock nuts they're all lock nuts well both of these and then you just swing that up put your pipe wrench on that and pull it up pull it down anyway and that'll make this go up and then slip it back under there and tighten up the nuts put that back on not too hard all right next thing to go on once you get your spindle all finished is the dust cover here goes on like that and it's got three 11 millimeter bolts hold it on all right the next thing you gotta do is put the inner and outer bearing races in there just make sure you put them in the right way pretty straightforward I like to use a socket to drive them in with a hammer But if you got to press, it's a thousand times better. Okay, so once you get all the bearings packed, put back together, you can slip this on and preload the bearings and all that. Get it to where it spins good, not too tight. And then you can put your dust cap on and put your brake hose, screw it into the caliper and get that ready to go on. Alright, there's the caliper ready to go on with the hose on it. Uh, these bolts, you're going to want to Loctite them. Blue Loctite. And in the kit, it comes with two different thickness um, washers. Thin and thick. You may or may not need to put those between the mounting bolts here. Show you on the other side. You want the caliper to be uh, spaced in the middle like that. You can see evenly spaced. So I had to use the thicker washer right there in between the caliper and the bracket. And it may be the same on the other side, it might not. And maybe sometimes you might not even need to use them. But you just want it kind of centered on there. That's the idea. All right guys, just got done bleeding the brakes. You're gonna wanna start on the passenger side rear, then the driver side rear, passenger side front, driver side front. That way you're working your way from the furthest point to the closest point to the master cylinder. And uh, I actually had to look that up because I could not get these front bled. I had to start in the back, that's the trick. Now I'm just topping off the reservoir and we should be good to go. The car should stop a lot better. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned.